I'm Corbett Wall with DV Auction here with a cattle market summary for the week ending October the 20th and close only counts in horseshoes and hand grenades but these cattle on feed analysts uh, that are trying to guess what that report's going to be every month more so on the placements than anything else they cannot even get close it, it is just becoming so ridiculous that they cannot get any closer than what they're getting and, uh, and basically that it's pretty blatant right in your face uh, that they're going to miss it every month. Uh, you know, I, I uh, hate to say that I told you so, but I told you so that these placements were going to be a lot heavier than what the analysts had predicted. And they sure enough did. They actually didn't come out quite as high as what I thought. Uh, you know, just, just looking at uh, nationwide auction receipts during September, that, uh, that September placement would have been straight up 15% uh, and it come out very, very close to that. But look at the board for last week to start off with. Live cattle futures for December contract. Monday was down 30. Tuesday was down 85. Wednesday up 67 cents. Thursday down a half a dollar and Friday up 45 cents. To end the week with December at 11660. That was down 52 cents for the week. The October spot uh, live cattle contract ended the week at 111.67, down a dollar 15. Feeder cattle November contract Monday was down 45 cents. Tuesday was off big, two dollars and 12 cents. Wednesday was down 35 cents. Thursday up 70 cents, and Friday up 30 cents. With November feeder cattle ending the week at 153.07, down a dollar 93 for the week. Your fat cattle trade really didn't develop until Friday through Thursday only had 8,300 heads sold in the five area feeding region. And then Friday as we got closer to that two o'clock central cattle on feed report, uh, I think both packers and, and sellers both were getting nervous and you started to see some trade develop uh, at 111 in the Southern Plains, which was fully steady. Uh, they had had some, some guys sell out earlier in the week at 110, and we had a few uh, outfits in the Northern Plains, mostly in Iowa, that sold live at 110, but it was mostly 111. But then after the, the, con or the uh, cattle on feed report come out, we had some dollar twelve in the Northern Plains. So uh, even though that cattle on feed report is probably going to be perceived as bearish, selling cattle a dollar higher than the bulk late in the week. We did that last month too, but nobody paid much attention. But selling those cattle at a dollar twelve uh, at late in the afternoon on Friday, especially out in uh, western Nebraska, Wyoming, Colorado, they've just been selling at a premium here for for weeks and weeks. And actually, uh, they normally run a buck or two behind uh, historically, but they're have really been taking advantage of this, and, and they're not learning how to trade these cattle. But that dollar twelve, so you had dollar ten to a dollar twelve, mostly a dollar eleven. But that is sure fully steady, and the dress sells almost entirely at one seventy five. Box beef cutout values had a, a late surge there late in the week, and with your average trade for the week, your choice carcasses at one ninety eight sixty three, up a dollar thirteen from the previous week's average, and selects at one ninety twenty eight, up eighty nine cents. But uh, you saw your big surge on Thursday, and then it was stronger again on Friday. Your slaughter for the week did the same thing. It come on strong there on Friday, where a week ago, Friday, we had kind of a slow day with some closings there, and then had a good Saturday. So we picked back up and, and surpassed last week with 632,000 head of cattle harvested. That's 10,000 more than the previous week and 30,000 more than the same week a year ago. But this cattle on feed report, uh, like I said, uh, they, they missed it again. Uh, not so much the on feed inventory and not so much the marketings, but that placement. Uh, I, I, I just don't understand why they want to miss it so far all the time. I know they don't want to, but do they not have a perception of, of how this works? Uh, you know, you had them running from 103 all the way to 116 on the guesses for those analysts that, are, uh, that do the predictions and the ones that are, are uh, published in Erner Berry, that uh, you look at your cattle on feed report. On feed inventories October the 1st come out at 105.4, 105.4, 105.4, 105.4, 105.4, 105.4, 105.4, 105.4, 105.4, 105.4, 105.4, 105.4, 105.4, 105.4, 105.4, 105.4, 105.4, 
which was not too far from the average analyst guess on the on-feed inventories at 104.7. That makes me wonder again, if, if they only missed your on-feed inventories by just a little bit, uh, why were they off so much on the placements? If, if they thought their placements were right, they, should have, they shouldn't have been so close to the on-feed inventories, but it just doesn't make a lot of sense. Your placements for September 113.5, they come out at uh, compared to 107.5, which was the average analyst guess, missing that six points percentage points there. And your marketings for September come out at 102.9 compared to 102.6, which was the average guess that everybody uh, saw and, and were betting on. But you know, this whole thing, and I've been really preaching on it hard, and I, I hate to, to keep harping on it, but I don't understand why we have to have this big unveiling every month. Uh, everybody gets in there and, just, and looks to see what the average of uh, the analyst guess was that are published there, and then you have other analysts that guess, but, but we're stuck on these, uh, these uh, individuals that are always published in that Unterberry report, and I don't understand why we have to have a drum roll and a big unveiling every month to see what the cattle and feed report is so that it can, the market hinges on that. Why don't we just have transparency wide open? When they get information, they share the information. Uh, that's one reason that uh, I'm really liking this uh, uh, National Beef Wire that we have out uh, here with DV Auction and uh, enjoying this uh, cattle market central information that's coming out that's shared on your beef market central uh, site and on your bmc app there this information just uh it comes in continuously all the time 24 hours a day uh we report information as soon as it comes in uh for the for the sale barns that are uh, cooperating with us and sharing information we can get the information out on a string of cattle that sold in that ring before the cattle make it to the pin back pin. And I think that's the way it should be on all this information. I don't understand why we have to hang on a, on a nail biter there just to wait and see. When you got people that have their whole uh, year's crop, cash crop, waiting and they got cattle to sell and it's hinging on some guys that really don't understand the cattle market or, or the cattle production. Uh, they're not sure which end gets up first. Uh, and yet they're hinging on, you know, making a big impact in these guys' lives, these ranchers that got their whole calf crop to sell, these guys that are backgrounded cattle all summer. Uh, it, it, I don't think that's the way it should be. You know, it's kind of like a Trading Places movie, if you remember watching that. I think it was orange juice that they was waiting on that report for and and uh and it just and then the board swings one way or the other now mind you the cme loves it because it gives them more volatility which uh you know keeps things changing all the time the traders love it but for the producers out there i just don't understand and it seems like every time the government gets involved in something like that uh, when you're hinging on a, a free free markets uh society here it, it kind of messes things up they're sitting on that information waiting to in and on i i was just like everybody else sitting at my computer at two o'clock central just waiting for that uh report to come out and and a lot of guys were that weren't sure where to find it were asking me you know how, how can i get that i want to see it as soon as it comes out it's foolish uh when, when you when you get information share it uh you know i worked for usda for several years uh, and we you know would sit on information sometimes, maybe not on purpose, but uh, you know, we knew of cattle that were selling in the feedlots and hadn't put a report out yet. Why? I don't understand. You know, uh, let them have it. Uh, I love it that uh, CBP, Consolidated Beef Producers, which is headquarters right here in Canyon, Texas, they tweet out their sales now. They're still working, uh, nego selling cattle negotiated, helping people get some leverage that don't have as many cattle to sell, uh, also working with big outfits. And they're, they're kind of holding this negotiated cattle trade together. And, uh, and there's no secret what they're doing. As soon as they sell cattle, they tweet it out. And uh, I know a lot of you are watching that too. It's at Cattle Trades. And, uh, and I love it. Uh, you know, you're always knowing what's going on. Why do you want to sit on information when we're striving for transparency in this industry, I will never know. But uh, you look at their, uh, 
a real time index end of the week on your feeder cattle based on the 800 pound steer on Beef Market Central there uh, posted at the end of the week 152.46 now that's down a dollar 92 for the week which your feeder markets uh, were, were real uh, kind of scattered late all last week but your southern plains markets even your true yearlings which have been selling so good because they're running out but the, all these calves that are selling it is this uh, it's just supply and demand there's the supplies are so heavy and not that they really don't want the cattle they don't have a place to put them uh, all of our holes are clogged up all of our trucks are taken all the starter pins are full They've got no place to go with these cattle. A lot of guys are having trouble with their newly arrived cattle, especially your lighter calves. They just can't take any more of them right now. Your processors can only handle so many of them. And everybody's in the rut of selling their cattle all at the same time right there in October. That's why every year you get a week or so in October where the market's just sick. And I'm afraid it's going to be this coming week because we've got a bearish cattle on feed report and all the holes are clogged. and and you look in your southern plains markets your big feeder cattle including big fat calves uh, even your big weaned uh, backgrounded calves and your yearlings all selling five to ten bucks lower and i'm talking about in, in kansas and oklahoma and uh, texas and places like that now you get up in the northern plains where you still see a lot more feeder uh, farmer feeder demand and uh, a lot of those guys are getting finished up with harvest and then they're uh, kind of frustrated with the market that they're getting on the corn they're coming in and buying up some cattle and we still and we got some of these big reputation ranch strings coming in uh, a lot of them in the northern plains and and the market was better up there it was kind of unevenly steady you saw it on both sides of steady but you saw some higher markets where just a few hundred miles uh, south they were under a lot of pressure but uh, you look at a, the biggest string that we'll see all year long Right there at three state stockyards in Falls City, Nebraska, Hermish Brothers cattle out of northeast Kansas sold 883 head of steers in one whack. They weighed 848 pounds through the ring at 153.60. Late in the week, you look at an individual quote on Cattle Market Central there, Lexington, Nebraska, uh, late in the afternoon or actually early evening on Friday sold 147 head of steers weighed 679 pounds at 180.50. That's a look at your week's markets from a home DV auction office here in Canyon, Texas. We'll talk to you next week.